Skateboard brands that'll survive 2020, aka last a few more years in a market that seems to be going a little downhill once in a while, which none of us want. I don't want that skating. I want you to grow and prosper forever and always. But some of the companies have been sort of leading the front right now and dominating in the space, which is great to see. And today I'm going to talk about five of them that I've noticed that I think will continue to grow the best. And it's basically the companies that I believe are doing the best right now, especially ones that have sort of cornered their market. And we're going to start off with Mother Fudging Awesome. And why am I not using the word? Because I'm afraid YouTube will do something about it. I just am. And people aren't really used to seeing me cuss, so that sounds really strange. But you know what? Here it is. Here's the brand, and these are some of the boards they have. And this brand, the, the best idea for marketing, in my opinion, is that it was started by a guy named Jason Lee. Uh, Jason Lee. I really just said that. Jason Dill and Ave Anthony Van Angelibalubaliba. And they added a bunch of writers that they knew personally, which happened to be a bunch of kids who were are on Supreme, who are the models for Supreme clothing, which is insane. So obviously the longevity of the brand is gonna last because Supreme is the only skate shop, shop the only skate company, I believe, to be worth a billion dollars. Uh, it's insane to see. And yeah, they're gonna to continue to post these kids and they get crazy engagement on Instagram and all the kids are really popular and blah, 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 blah. That's sort of what they do. They sort of mold these kids from a very young age. But yeah, and, and I'm looking at the screen now and these are some of the boards that they have and I think they're cool. I think the idea that they just have this model with the pros on the board and that's it is a cool idea. And I, I think that simplicity is something that sort of helps um, I don't know, keep you attached to the brand. But yeah, I mean, all these guys, they're amazing. It's cool to see. And it's funny because I know, you know, there's like Sean Pablo, there's Nikel Smith, there's uh, Kevin Bradley, forgetting their names, Elijah Burrell, uh, Kevin Turpening. So there's random pros that you never, like a lot of people wouldn't really know, like Kevin Turpening, but people who I think are amazing. And someone I've been watching since he was on S, which is really cool. And then there's Tyshawn Jones, who's actually in the other video I made about Jonah Hill. Um, and then, yeah, there's Sage Alcessor, I think is his last name. It's really confusing. Gianni Iannucci, legends. And a lot of people who sort of dominate the East Coast scene. Um, yeah, I mean, they, they're, they're, they have a foothold in this whole thing, and they're going to last quite a while, is my belief. Next, and this is going to make people cringe, but there's a reason I'm doing this, revive skateboards. And the only reason I'm saying cringe is I actually ride for Revive Skateboards, and ironically, that's me right there on the front, which is awesome. Um, they're like the opposite brand. And I actually know a skate shop that intentionally puts the Revive boards next to the fudging awesome boards because they think it's so funny, the dynamic, and to see people's reactions when they see the two boards together. Um, but they are like the opposite companies that sort of appeal to the opposite person. Revive, I think, or it does, primarily dominate the sphere of people getting into skateboarding for the first time, so very young kids or people getting back into skateboarding who sort of didn't like the way that skating was when they started. Maybe they got into it, they went to a couple skate shops, they went to a couple skate parks, and they thought it was bad vibes all around. Then they watched these videos of a bunch of dorks on the internet, aka me, Andy Schrock, etc., and they're like, this is what I vibe with, and a lot of people do. So Revive has, come, Revive has become one of the best-selling board brands out, um, which I feel weird saying because I think I think part of their vibe and their allure is that they're like a small homey brand that somebody in Cincinnati, which is the truth, somebody in Cincinnati who's like a dork online, you can literally go back in time and watch him build the brand from scratch before he had the brand. He's like, guess what guys, I'm getting a couple boards in. Let me know what you think. Audience buys it. You can watch these videos progress, which is super fun in my opinion, but because of that, their transparency is a lot. <laughs> they have full transparency. So you see them front to back. There's no trick. There's no whatever. Uh, and you get to see all of it be made. And I think that's a beautiful, beautiful thing. So Revive is second on that list for me. Palace. Now, this is what's funny. This is Palace. And as you can see, they have crazy merch game, crazy clothing merch game. It's clothing and it's a clothing brand. Um, but when you scroll on this website, they have one skateboard featured. Oh, oh, you click boards. Oh, well, there's still one. Okay, so I think they have one skateboard for sale on their website, but they are a skateboard brand, and that's where they originated. And a lot of people don't know that because they're very much a hype beast type brand, especially in New York, et cetera. But this interview right here, if you watch it, it's ASOS Meet Palace Skateboards. You have to find it not on YouTube. You have to find it somewhere else. 
really interesting, really good perspective coming from the guy who made the brand and his intentions with it and sort of how it became this way bigger thing that he even knew it was going to be. But he started off just with his vision, sponsoring his friends and kind of the same thing as I'm talking about with Revive, but he became this hype beast mecca and it's been super cool and they have a shop right down the road in one of the hypest parts of new york city so palace i think they're here to stay i think if you have a shop in new york you're chilling um and then from there we have welcome skateboards welcome skateboards came in on complete fire when i was working at blue tile skate shop back in the day we sold every single welcome board we would get in right away and a lot of skate shops experienced the same thing and why is that well they're very pure in the sense of look at all the designs made clearly by the same person but shaped boards if you look at all the boards they're all different shapes and then right here you have some popsicle ones but at the time when they started popsicle was a weird shape for them which is the standard shape for a normal skateboard so in, everyone was just excited about something different skateboarding is this way and this way and this way now i can finally make skateboarding my way by buying a welcome skateboard and that was the idea at the beginning it's become so popular that now they sell clothing through urban outfitters here i am looking through it there's a welcome mat that's funny um, but yeah, you can buy welcome gear at your local Urban Outfitters. And it's cool because, you know, they have Nora, which is a really popular girl skater. And then they have this guy, Ryan Townley, who I was actually really good friends with in New York and California when I first moved there. And we'd go filming all the time together. And now he's pro for them, which is super, super amazing to see. And you know what? I'm going to try to keep the volume low so we don't get copyright. But here's an example of what he does. Oh, Ollie the Grand Canyon? What else do you got, Ryan? Tray flip. I mean, he's an amazing skateboarder. And this is all filmed on a SD camera, which sometimes drives me crazy because it's a little harder to see sometimes. But I mean, the dude is talent. If you've smelled talent before, you've probably had a hint of what Ryan Townley smells like in real life. Great guy. So for the last brand, and we might actually watch more of this because that was fun to watch. Primitive Skateboards. Primitive skateboards. And it's weird that I'm sponsored by a company and I'm talking about all these other brands that are doing so well, but I think it's interesting. And I think it's cool for people out there to see sort of what the, I think, best-selling board brands are and the brands that I believe have figured out a market to last. Uh, Primitive is definitely there. They have P-Rod. Paul Rodriguez is the guy who started the company and he is renowned, known. I don't know if I just said anything, but he's known as one of the best skaters of all time period. He's been a prodigy since he was a tiny kid, and actually his first things that were filmed were by Nigel Alexander, a fellow YouTuber that helped me grow. He actually was the first YouTuber who uh, collabed with me, and I just skated, and I put out a bunch of footage on his channel, and bada bing bada boom, helped out my career immensely. He did the same thing for P-Rod, and Lamont Holt, and Sharni, and... He helped Chris Chan a lot too. I mean, it wasn't, Chris Chan did it on his own, but Nigel helped and he helped me immensely. So now that you have a skateboarder who's probably one of the best skaters on earth, when he puts together a brand, it's going to be legit. And he has the mindset of someone who's been through all of it and still currently filming video parts constantly. So the attraction for Primitive for me is their YouTube channel. I think everything that they upload is so good. And as you can see, it does really well. The week ago, welcome Trey Williams, nicest guy ever from Riverside, 116,000 views. And the video before that, Trent McClung. Trent McClung seriously has a part come out like every three or four months on this channel. It's amazing. All their tour videos are just fantastic. It's, it's perfect. Like their content seems perfect. And a lot of people actually have issue with that. There's a lot of really cool skaters who don't like the idea of perfection, but if there's someone who chases it the best, it's primitive, in my opinion. And then, of course, they collab with people like Dragon Ball Z, Sriracha Hot Sauce. <clears throat> Sorry about that. I'm talking a lot, and I should have brought a water bottle, but you know what? We're going to finish this first. So it's cool to see that they sponsor people that P-Rod believes to be better than himself. So when you're someone who's already the best and you're only finding skaters better than you, you're going to have a team that undoubtedly does well. Um, so Primitive is here to say, I believe, I think he's a lot of amazing backings. And I think in terms of collaboration, since he's working with brands that are so big, like Rick and Morty as well, he's going to last. And I think that's it. Yeah, I think when it comes to brands, let me look at how much time we have left. Uh, when it comes to brands, those those are the five that I believe will be dominating. But there's actually one more thing I did want to look at with you guys, which was CCS catalog. And we can sort of go through because I know some people out there are going to be bummed that I freaking didn't pick your brand that you like a lot. That's your favorite brand. 
So let's go through this list right here. I mean, you can look, you can go here and just check out all these brands, see what they're doing, but CCS carries everything. So they're gonna also carry brands that aren't doing as well. And even scrolling down this list, some people are gonna be bothered up skipping some, but you know, some of you may have heard of Arbor, which uh, Garrett Jenner rides for. But if you go down, there's Almost, Antihero. You know, these are brands that I believe are doing well enough. You know, Brimley doesn't even exist anymore. I talked to the guy who owns that brand and it's literally under. Uh, and you know, a lot of these brands are actually suffering a little bit. I think DGK had a pretty good, uh, has a pretty good corner cut out for themselves because it really is like the like swaggest of the swag. Um, so that's that's cool. There's Doomsayers. I think they're pretty popular. PewDiePie wears their clothes sometimes. Element, I think, is good. I think Element's going to be around for a while. One of my friends actually just went pro for them. Um, let's see. Yeah, I mean, you know, these are brands that have have been the same amount of popular or at least decreased in popularity that I'm really not mentioning. Frog Skateboards is a cool brand out of New York. Uh, they're, they're popular for the sake of that the guy who runs it is like a kid. Um, and a lot of people relate to the kind of videos they put out, which is cool. Crooked, I think, is going to be good. Mark Gonzalez, I mean, he's he's a legend. He he does art for Supreme, so he'll be around. Some of these I haven't heard of. Less Than Local, that's random. That's actually my friend's brand named Andrew. Oh, I forgot your last name, dude. I'm so sorry. Um, let's see. Madrid, I haven't heard of that. I'm not going to smack my lips into the mic again. Pizza, I think, is a pretty cool brand. And I'm saying this based on brands that are newer. Pocket Pistols, I didn't know was around. A friend of mine wrote for them. Politic is cool. Powell Peralta is doing a lot of cool things right now, especially with their boards that don't break. I think that's a good marketing idea. Uh, Rip and Dip. I mean, I don't think they consider themselves a board brand at all. I think they can they just make boards. And then, you know, there's some brands. Skate Mafia. Skate Mafia, I think, is good. I, I think if they put out content the way they used to, they would be fine because they, in my opinion, are some of... They're, they're one of my favorite companies ever in history, but trying not to be super biased... Um, and think about the longevity of their brand, but I love what they do. I think they're they're so fun and just brands who put out the most content to me are the people that I appreciate the most. And when you think of someone like, you know, Revive, we, we probably put out some of the most content because there's eight people on the brand who have cha YouTube channels with more than 100,000 subscribers. And that's just what we do. And we happen to become friends that way. And that's how the team sort of kind of got started. Weekend, I think is great. I think Weekend is going to be in the market for a while, and I appreciate their faces and what they do. And that's it. So I want to know your opinion. What's your favorite brand, and what brand do you think will sort of survive? And if there's a brand I didn't mention, definitely let me know down below. And yeah, this is a raw video straight up beginning to end because I am so sick of YouTube not being transparent, so I don't want to fake anything with you guys. I want you guys to be able to listen and hear everything that I'm saying, thinking, lip smacking, and yeah, and I appreciate your faces also. Uh, these hats will be coming out soon. The shirt is out. Progress daily. If you want to check out the store, you can look in the link in the description down below. Got a lot of shirts for sales and we're sort of, uh, yeah, we're going to be adding a lot of merch in the upcoming couple of weeks. I mean, a lot. So stay tuned and I appreciate your support. And if you enjoy this, let me know down below. Can't wait to see your faces for the next video. You can tune in tomorrow. There's another video. Guys, I love you so much. Progress daily and keep killing it.